Nice pass, Morrison. Picks up her dribble, skips it to Boyce. It's three on the way, off the rim, and good! It went straight up and dropped through. Good. 16 to nothing run with 12 seconds to go in the quarter. Good afternoon, everyone. We welcome you inside the Ferris Center for the final time of this three-game homestand that's gone over the last couple of weeks. It's the annual pink zone game here for game number one of the Southland Doubleheaders. Your Central Arkansas Sugar Bears and the Southeastern Louisiana Lady Lions meeting for the second time this season. The Sugar Bears trying to earn the split of the season series after losing 62-53 to on January the 5th up at the UC in Hammond, America. Basically, there are seven teams vying for two spots to make it into the Katy, Texas, into the Southland Conference Tournament. That's what the Sugar Bears have left in these last eight games. They have got to be one of those top, the last two teams in, because basically the first five are set, barring something unforeseen. And what's worse is if you weren't with us last Saturday, as you know by now, Taylor Sales will be out indefinitely with a foot injury, so the Sugar Bears once again are shorthanded going into their crucial Southland Conference games. But they'll try to finish up this homestand on a high. They've played better the last two and a half games. They'll try to carry that momentum over into this afternoon. Penetration by Orr kicks it to Goodner. Long range three on the way. Three up in Sugar Bears. I was just telling you that he's shooting a whole lot better from behind the arc than they did the first time. These two matched up. Back to Orr on the wing. She penetrates inside the paint. Up, under, back, cross. They reach. She got away with a travel. Flips it up over the front. Real good. Henry Orr got away on the travel. We'll take it. We haven't always got those calls this year. And Sorry about it. Both ends of the floor for Central Arkansas. And hot shooting. Boys, it drives in. Finds Kennedy. Left baseline jumper. Wide open. Good. She picks up right where she left off last Saturday afternoon. Orr. Fisher, and now Boisich with the long three. Good. You've got to get out there. She was wide open left wing. Left screen by Kennedy. Pull up jumper by Orr. Line drive, and it is good. Sugar Bears literally cannot miss. They cannot miss. It's 20 to 7. They are 7 of 7 from the floor. First quarter. Man, 25 to 10. Seems like longer. Boisich, left corner. Jumper, long range into two, but it is nonetheless good. Central Arkansas is a perfect 9 for 9 from the floor with 12 seconds to go here in the first quarter of play. Gives it back to her senior point guard, Camry Orr. Orr with a running jumper in the paint. Floats over the front of the rim good. The Sugar Bears finally get a bucket with 5.20 left in the half. Court. All of a sudden with the basket, the Sugar Bears can take their largest lead. Orr goes right in, floats it over the front of the rim. Nobody stops the basketball. Time out, Southeastern Louisiana. Camry Orr attacking. 33-14, the Sugar Bears have their largest lead. Bounces it to Orr underneath. Off the glass, too strong. Kennedy with the rebound. Slips it off the glass. She missed. Gets her own rebound. Count it she fouled! And she'll head to the line for a three-point play with a fist pump and a yell from her head coach rushing as well. Shot clock, Boisich. Picks up her dribble, spins. Goes back door, the wide open, good through the layup is good! Boisich with the back door. What a heads up play by Goodner to see her singer in trouble go back door. Kennedy with a block shot. The catch by Boisich. By the way, it's a 13 to nothing run. Or at the free throw line stops with 44 seconds to go in the first half. A 13 nothing run. The Sugar Bears nearly up 30 points. They've outscored the Lady Lions 14 to 4 here in the quarter. 33 to go in the half. 12 to go on the shot clock. Or drives past Morrison, picks up her dribble, skips it to Boise. It's three on the way, off the rim, and good! It went straight up and dropped through. Good. 16 to nothing run with 12 seconds to go in the quarter. Too strong. There's Langey with another offense. Three rebound, one dribble, hook shot with her left hand, rolls around for her first field goal of the day. Anna Langey. The scoreless streak nearly went 10 minutes. Boys, it's wide open, left corner three, good. And on the other end, the Sugar Bears don't care. They come right back and bury the three. Boys, it's to Lange, short pass to Orr. Orr with a wide open lane to the bucket with an easy left hand layup. They let her go, wide open, 58-21. Leading scorer coming in, fourth best scorer in league games. 13 seconds to go, shot clock off here in the third quarter of play. UCA outscoring them 13-9. Cameron Orr is going to hold the ball. With 7 on the clock, there she goes. Uses a screen by Lange. She'll drive, step back, jumper on the way. Good. Horn sound, thank you very much. 
at the end of three quarters, thanks to Camry Orr, 23 points, the Sugar Bears lead Southeastern Louisiana. A complete total team effort. Boyzitz takes the first pass from Orr in the third quarter, lobs underneath the lane. High off the glass, counted, and she's fouled with a grin, and she's headed to the line for a three-point play. Zone games. 9-10 to go. Camry Orr leads all scores. She has as many points individually as the Lady Lions have as a team through three quarters. She has the ball left corner. Beats Sterling baseline. Bounces underneath the lane. It was knocked away. Picked up by Fisher. Jumper from the free throw line is good. Nothing can go wrong for Central Arkansas. 2.20 to go in the game. 14 on the shot clock. Low finds Goodner. Goodner will dribble. Take a dribble. Finds Shea Johnson. Launches a deep two and it's good from the left side. Shea Johnson with her first bucket. Shea underneath the Hudson. The layup is good with two on the shot clock. And that'll pretty well put the final touches on this one. Eudner has it with 11 on the shot clock. Sprinting up the floor is Johnson. To low, left hand layup and transition is good. Exclamation point complete. A total and utter domination of southeastern Louisiana here this afternoon as the bucket at the end by Dugas means nothing in the final total. You were, you were worried your team might come in sluggish of all things. Well, I thought we started out the game extremely well. I thought we had some great leadership on the floor. I thought Cameron Ward did a, a, a great job of getting us into our offense, knowing when to attack and not attack. But I was very pleased with, with our defensive effort. I thought Fish, I thought Maddie Goodner, not sure what she, but she, we're going to talk to her. She had. she had six points, three steals, two rebounds, two, and she didn't come out. Hey, a solid effort defensively for us. Your incredible lives are what make Arkansas so special. That's why doing our part to keep you amazing is our mission. By providing the most skilled doctors and nurses to heal you from sickness or injury and giving comprehensive care to support your recovery, we're your guide to health. All so you can keep on giving. Keep on inspiring. And keep on amazing. For the care that keeps you amazing, visit baptist-health.com. At UCA, we have the second highest on-campus undergraduate enrollment in the state for a reason. Lots of reasons, actually. The University of Central Arkansas. Go here and go anywhere. So... Again, everything went right in the first half. What, what, from your perspective, having – well, you were on the floor the whole time, so you're a good person to ask. What did uh, you see? What worked so well, especially compared to the first time around against the Lions? I think when we started our offense the first few minutes, when I knocked down the first shot, I, it was just energy, energy, energy. And it was just so fun knocking down that first shot because once we knock down that first shot, anything's possible. We have more energy. We were like, okay, now we're, we're good. We got that first shot off our shoulders, and now let's just go play. And Camry Orr just was going and going. So that just pumped us up. And it was just, it, we felt unstoppable out there. And yeah. it was just so fun because we were nine for nine the first yeah. the first quarter. So it was just like, okay, we're going to just keep shooting until we miss. Yeah. And we were just having a blast out there in our huddles. We were just enjoying the huddle talk. And we were making jokes. And we were just enjoying our time out there t as a team. It was fun. Did Coach tell you you're going to play 40 minutes or did that just the way the game <laughs> flowed? No, it, she did not tell me. But that's okay. Coach, well, what was your with, – with Taylor out, what was your anticipation for what Maddie would be doing and, and as far as your rotation went? Well, I mean, I, Maddie's an offensive threat for us. And, and, you know, she's not the quickest thing but either. But I'm telling you what, her defense, her long, her length, she can get down, she can guard people. Uh, and, you know, she's got to be on the floor for us. And, you know, she's playing with a lot of confidence and uh, being a leader out there. I like I said, and Cam was also a leader out there. And, um, you know, I wouldn't even look at her – to ask if she needed a break. So, I mean, if she was going to ask me, I was going to turn my head. Yeah. Because she, she needed to be on the floor for us, and she's probably going to play a couple more 40-minute ball games for us. Yeah. Well, you've been part of championship basketball here over the years. What would you feel like? I mean, in that role for you, with a little more responsibility on your shoulders, what are you thinking? I like more responsibility on my shoulders. I feel like I can help the team more, and I can be a team player. I can do more for the team when someone else isn't doing what – you know, like if they're having a bad game, I can step up and do what I need to do. And I just love having so much more leadership and confidence and more of a role on this team. And it's just a lot of fun. I've asked Coach about this, and it's been difficult, I'm sure, from, from her perspective. But from a player's perspective, with all the, the changes you guys have gone through, you don't normally see a kind of this kind of roster sort of take shape. And, of course, it was such a different-looking roster from last year anyway. And then you have – 
you know, some things happen and then some injuries now. How, how difficult has it been for you all to get chemistry on the floor? We still haven't had everyone together, so it's been kind of tough in practice learning how everyone plays and playing together. But I think we're starting slowly to come together and learn how everyone plays, and we're playing harder. We're playing with more energy, more focus, and it's we're coming together. Like Even though it's a little late in the season, we're still going to keep going and still push and make sure we get to the tournament, and hopefully once we get there, it's zero to zero when you're there. That's so right. once we get there, that's when we're going to focus on we're going to take one game at a time and we're going to make sure we get in the championship game. Each summer, student athlete leaders from the Southland Conference's 13 schools get together for a retreat. Before we start another season of competition, there's time to have some fun and bond. We also share experiences of serving our campuses and communities. Together, Southland student athletes completed more than 30,000 community service hours over the past year. We pull for each other and push to make each other better. Just part of what makes us Southland strong. At UCA, students come in with the second highest ACT and GPA in the state and leave with a career that's second to none. The University of Central Arkansas. Go here and go anywhere. And we walk into the Ferris Center here on this Saturday afternoon. Justin Ankry, Sammy Muncy here courtside for the second meeting between the Southeastern Louisiana Lions and your UCA Bears. Bears won on the road at Southeastern in memorable fashion on a Matthew Mondesir tip-in that gave the Bears the two-point victory, 73-70 to won the final down there. It was a hard-fought game. The Bears with a big lead that the Lions made up. But the Bears were able to come out at the end and avoid overtime on the road and win in Hammond for the first time ever. The Bears, 7-5 and five all time here in Conway, though, winning record overall 8-16 and 16 against these Lions. How about 81% from the charity stripe since getting into Southland Conference play, Sammy? Much improved for a team that started 0-3 in conference play, and they are now sitting in 6-4. and four. So I think people can do the math, the fact that they have won six of their last seven games, and they are on fire. The lone loss to... Undefeated in conference and league leading Sam Houston State. And uh, in that win streak, they've won four in a row on the road. And hopefully the Bears come out today um, with a the, with the mindset of ending that, that streak and that, that run that Southeastern's on. Southeastern's the last in the league in scoring offense. They only score 64 or just under 65 points yeah. a game. Um, but it's going to be a, a really good game this afternoon, I think. Marlon Veal, I think, you know, if you've been paying attention to the Southland Conference and Bear Basketball the last few years. You know that name. And it's going to be a good matchup between him and DeAndre at the point guard spot, I think. And um, This is a game the Bears have lost three in a row. We've got to get on the winning track. Saw this quote today, and I want you to see this before we go out. It says, reaching our full potential is a journey of persistence and perseverance in spite of failure. You're going to get knocked down. You're going to have some bad days. You're going to have some bad halves. Your coach is going to get on you. Your coach is going to say some things that ruffle your feather. But do you have the persistence and the perseverance in spite of the failure, in spite of the things that make you feel uncomfortable to reach your full potential? That's what you're trying to do today. In spite of it all, we got eight games to go. In spite of it all, everything you want to do is still in front of you. So I say the last thing again. Go take what you want. Let's go get this done. Yeah! Unruh drives, kicks, short corner. Colbow gets the Bears on the board. Baseline drive by Chatham. Pushed off, no foul called. Gets it to Colleen Bennett all the way in. Layup off the glass. And good! That's what he's great at. That's what he's got to do more of for this team. Colleen he Bennett absorbing the contact and getting the shot to go. The foul is going to be called on Charleston. Colbow will get it again. Face up Greenwood, pulls up jumper, and good. That's tough. Tough to guard right there. It is tough to guard, but I like it because he did not wait. Yes. He just went, and yep. it was decisive, and it worked out well for the Bears, who have cut the lead to four. He certainly created it, yeah. whether he gets credit for it or not. Jones, three from the left wing. Good! Bears tie it up at 13 apiece with 10 and a half to play. Mondes here, hard drive kick. Kylu three straight away. That's good. We're tied at 18. Nice, nice little answer right there. 9.20 left in an entertaining game so far. And three. Unruh races over and pulls down the rebound as Sanders and Koval go crashing to the floor on the rebound attempt. Unruh up and oh. good. Drew a lot of contact there. No foul called. And 
official says the defender went straight up. Not sure I agree with that one, but Unruh, nice body control for the senior as he gets his team back within one. 21-20 with 7-10 left. Next to Unruh, thought about pulling the trigger again. Instead, we'll drive all the way, scoop up and good. He had Edwards on him, and he said, this dude can't hold me. Going right by him. Yes, he did. Sailed right by to cut the lead to three. 26-23 with 5 26-23. Let me try that again with 5-20 left. Comes in, starts directing traffic. DJ, 5 Beal, all the way up off the glass, and good. And a nice bucket by DeAndre Jones to cut the lead to 6, 38-32. Kylu down on the baseline against Charleston. Will back him down with the left hand up, and good. Nice. And that is a patient but decisive play by yes. Kylu. Knew exactly what he wanted to do. Play DeAndre Jones off a high screen. Goes all the way in, stops, hit pops, and it's 38-36. DeAndre Jones That's off the screen. Nice play. Great start to the second half. 40-36, bare ball. Koval back in the game. Faces up. Goes baseline. Spins all the way in. Shot up and good. And there, there you, go. you go. Quickly, decisively yes. against Starwood. 49-43. Lions lead it with 11.35 left. Kaleem Bennett on a rough shooting night has it. Now kicks it to Grant in the corner against Parker Edwards, who's made four threes here today. High loop to Bennett. Bennett drives and kicks. Koval straight on three. That's nice. good. And nice offense there by the Bears. And that's, again, Koval can get that shot yeah. a lot. Uh-huh. Bears down 11. Plenty of time left. Jones behind the back dribble. Kicks. Corner three. Kyle Lou. That's good. Eddie Kyle Lou cuts it to an eight-point lead. And Russ Pennell calls timeout to talk it over. Unruh feeds the post. Schmidt against two defenders, had it ripped away, hook shot, good. Could have been a foul, yeah. lost control, got it back. Great awareness by Tanner Schmidt to get the ball back and put it up and in. And the Bears are back within seven with 441. Matt Unruh will try a three from the right side, in and out. Koval offensive rebound, stick back, good, and he foul. Great play by Koval, and boy, I've never seen a ball go further down and come back out than Unruh's did. That thing was almost through and somehow came back out, but luckily... It was Hayden on the spot to a nine-point lead. Three-possession game with 52 seconds. We've seen crazier things, but the Bears have got to get a three. Unruh, turnaround, three-pointer, good. That's Unruh cuts it to a six-point lead just like that. 68-62, and that's exactly what the Bears needed. They're going to have to get some help by the Lions at the uh, free-throw line, though. Unfortunately, for the last three games, that uh, hasn't resulted in any victories. Right. 71-67. Both free throws good. Still a four-point game. Ball inbounded to another bounce deal, and he is touched by Thatch Unruh, who nearly ends up in Sammy Muncy's lap. And for Unruh, he's done. Made it both. Koval will inbound it. Pressure in the backcourt, just trying to run clock here by the Lions. Smart Grant by the court. Yep. Down Ray Jones into the front court, drives, kicks. Extra pass to the corner. Widen our three on the way short. And that should do it. Veal, they're not going to foul him. Yes, they are for some reason. Three seconds left. It's an impossibility now. That'll do it. Bears are going to lose today here. Four straight losses, and uh, that is extremely disappointing, man. Extremely disappointing. Coach, um, as far as quality shots and offense, the way you guys ran the offense against a, a very active southeastern defense, how did you guys feel? Because obviously... Shooting percentages weren't there. You guys didn't knock down a lot of shots today. They didn't make a ton either, but uh, and your defense certainly improved in the second half. But what did you see from your offense today? Uh, we there were possessions where we didn't move the ball enough, or possessions where we didn't reverse the ball enough. We did have some good possessions, and uh, in those good possessions, we didn't make make the open shots. But we got to increase those possessions that we get the open shots from reversals, from moving the ball, from cutting hard. That's another thing we didn't do, especially in the first half. We didn't cut very hard. Uh, we, we've got to increase those possessions. And then the shots will fall. We'll miss some, but we'll have enough of those, and we'll make enough to win the game. Did a much better job, as I mentioned, defensively in the second half. Six of 18 is all you allowed them, 33%. But they were also 23 of 28 at the free throw line. It was a, a game that was certainly called... Uh, very tight. I guess I'll say that. There were a lot of fouls called in the game. You guys also were 25 of 31 at the free throw line, but um, I guess the, the pace of play was just sort of a muddied up game, it looked like, most of the day, and that seemed to favor the Lions. It, it, it did favor them. You know, they, they, They've they shortened their bench um, as far as minutes played by players, So, and they know that we like to get up and down, and, and um, making the game slower, shortening the game was in their favor. We didn't help ourselves. A, a few times we walked the ball up the floor instead of racing it up the floor, and, and took the pressure off of them, and they had less time to guard 
us in the half court. And when we only have 20, 18 seconds in the possession, as opposed to having more like 23, 25, then it's harder to get a quality shot. Here I am back at UCA. This is where I got my start. Hacking in plays, studying literature, writing scripts. Campus has grown so much in the last few years, and the technology is incredible. UCA is where I learned the craft of storytelling and got ready for a career in New York and LA. That's how I got here. Go here and go anywhere. Go UCA. You've had different guys lead uh, by example on the floor, and some guys are just, you know, we've seen DeAndre do it. We've seen Thatch do it as far as just taking a game over. Have you had anybody kind of get in there these last couple of days and jerk up maybe some of his teammates and, and say, follow me or let's go? No, not really, and that's that's one of the issues, I think. Uh, you know, again, I, I've just – I usually leave them alone on Sunday, our day off. And uh, but th- this week, I really felt like I needed to see them. Uh, when when I left them on uh, Saturday, they were uh, they were a hurt bunch. I mean, uh, it's one of those times when you go in as a coach and you're trying to talk to them and no one will look up, and uh, that's that's not a good sign because th- that means they're just uh, not even processing what you're saying. They're so de- defeated and down. And, you know, and I hate that for them. I, I, I wish we'd had success, and, and a lot of that's brought on ourselves. So I don't want to sound like we're feeling sorry for ourselves. My team is a little bit. I'm not. <laughs> I've, I've been through this a few times. But I also have to understand that, uh, you know, you put a lot of time and effort into something, and you feel like you got it going the right way, and all of a sudden the wheels come off. Um, that can that can kind of knock you down. But I, I also know we have seven games left, and I think they're all winnable. Uh, you know, even the ones we got coming in here are tough, tough games, but they're at home. And if we get things right, we can be a formidable uh, opponent the rest of the way. And, and, and that's what I told them. Everything they want to do is still in front of them. Let's don't get ahead of ourselves and worry five weeks down the road. We just got Wednesday night to get ready for and uh, and just see where it takes us. But we definitely have the talent to do it. You, you're, you do such a good job, and, and sports is such a results-driven thing. So it's about did we win or did we lose? You have been great. I thought early in the season when your team was rolling, you said it's more about the standard we're playing to and the way we're playing, more so than the fact that we're happening to win these games. Um, now you got to kind of flip the script. Can you get your guys to focus on, hey, you know, we're doing this well or we're playing well here and not get so hung up, hung up in the results? You almost have to go the other way. Yeah, a little bit. But I think some of the reasons we're not playing as well is we have not played up to the standards quite as much. And, and so we're trying to get back to that. Uh, you know, it's it's interesting in, in leagues like the Southland Conference or, you know, the, uh, you know, the, the team, the, the conferences where you have to play the hard games. You you look on ESPN at the records, everybody's got kind of a just so-so record. And I think that what happens sometimes, you get caught up in that, and you get to thinking, man, we're not very good. We're 10 and 14. And then you look up and go, well, so is Corpus Christi, and so is this team, and so is that team. And it's not really about that. It's trying to get your team better. And I've had to recalibrate. I'm used to winning. I mean, I've never lost till I came to UCA. Mm-hmm. And part of that's built in. It's tough to go to Indiana and Michigan and those places and, and win. Great experience, and you should take it as that way. But I think what has to happen is you got to just like have amnesia and go next game. Come on, let's go again. Let's go again, and then by the end of the year, perhaps your team is playing well and you have a chance to do some things that you set out to do. But um, my guys, I think they'll bounce back. I, I think the, the, today they look like they still wanted to play, and I think that's a big thing that we're trying to instill in them. That you know, tough times come at you but tough people last and that's what I hope they'll learn that's a life lesson as well as a basketball lesson